Hi, and welcome to this presentation on clinical linguistics and EMR interoperability. I'm Dirk Stanley, and this is one of the presentations available at DirkStanley.com. So let's get started. For today, we have three goals. The first is to describe the three common communications models used in clinical settings, including synchronous, asynchronous, and hybrid. Number two is to show factors that professional interpreters consider when managing synchronous real-time communications. And number three is to show how these factors can help improve asynchronous communication, documentation, EMR user experience, and interoperability. So let's get started. First, the three common communications models seen in clinical care today. The first type is synchronous communication, which is undocumented real-time communication. This is where both parties are speaking and negotiating the exchange of information in real time, such as in a conversation, telephone call, or video call. The next is asynchronous communication, which is documented communication that doesn't happen in real time. This is where sender and recipient are not sharing the same space or time, such as in notes, charts, graphs, recordings, videos, or messages. The third type is hybrid communication, which shares features of both, such as text chats, Twitter, and social media. To look at this a little more deeply, let's review. The first type, synchronous communication. Again, this is undocumented, real-time communication where both parties are speaking and negotiating the exchange of information in real time. Common examples are face-to-face -face verbal discussions, telephone calls, video conferencing, and even meetings. The pros of synchronous communication are that it's very quick and easy to produce a message. And sometimes hearing the recipient's voice or even sometimes seeing the recipient allows for extra layers of error checking and correction. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. The cons of synchronous communication are that it requires the scheduling of both sender and recipient because both need to share the discussion at the same time. There's also less time to prepare a message, so it's very easy to create a wrong message that's then misinterpreted on the other side. With asynchronous communication, this is documented communication that doesn't happen in real time. This is where sender and recipient are not sharing the same space or time. Examples of this are the electronic medical record notes, charts, videos, recordings, messages, or even voicemails. The pros are that they're very easy to schedule because sender and recipient do not need to share the same time. And you can take more time to prepare your message, so it's very easy to target a message for a specific audience. The cons are that it's less spontaneous, it takes longer to prepare those messages, and there's less ability to correct an error after it's sent. Finally, a review of hybrid communication. This shares features of both synchronous and asynchronous communication. Some examples of this are text chats, Twitter, and social media. The pros are that it's documented, easy to schedule, easy to create, and allows for additional error checking in some circumstances. The cons are that it's new and sometimes informal, and error checking can quietly fail if the synchronous discussion suddenly becomes asynchronous. You might see this if a recipient suddenly walks away from a text chat and then returns later trying to interpret the messages. So what is error checking? Error checking is the ability to verify that your message has been validated and successfully received on the other side. Computers do this using technical tools like checksums and other technical protocols to help ensure the correct transmission and receipt of information. Human beings don't have those technical tools, but we've evolved certain social etiquettes such as the puzzled face, the huh, request for clarification, or even a verbal readback that's commonly used in clinical settings. But all of these are only available with synchronous, real-time, provider-to-provider communication. So an example of error checking via the telephone is seen here where we look at a synchronous, real-time conversation between two people. 
Here the telephones might have some form of electronic error checking to make sure what goes into the microphone on one side comes out of the speaker on the other. But how do the two human beings help negotiate the transfer of information? This is where again we have that human error checking such as the huh, the request for clarification, or verbal readback. The challenge with electronic medical records is that they're documents. This is asynchronous communication. So even though the computers might have some form of computer error checking to ensure that what goes into the EMR at 9 o'clock AM comes out of the EMR at 4 o'clock PM, but here there's no human error checking. There's no huh, no request for clarification or readback. And this is why it's so important to consider these factors when you're designing clinical EMR documentation. How does this influence interoperability? Well again, just getting two computers to share information is an enormous technical feat. But even when we accomplish this, we still have to achieve cultural, semantic, design, and workflow interoperability. This gets us to a discussion about clinical linguistics. What can real-world language management teach us about EMR documentation design and interoperability? Well, to answer this question, I'm first going to discuss what is the difference between an interpreter and a translator. These are two terms that are commonly interchanged, but they have a slight distinction between them. In general, Interpreters, such as those you'd see at the United Nations, in a court, or in professional settings across the world, are responsible for managing accurate spoken, synchronous communication in real-time face-to-face settings. Translators, however, are responsible for designing accurate written, asynchronous communication. So while the mediums are different, they both share a deep passion for language and achieving high rates of successful communication. What interpreters and translators know is that technology aside, communication can be heavily influenced by the following. Not only language, but also context and the scenario that the communication is happening in. Culture, the role and education of both the sender and the recipient. Time constraints and the urgency for both parties. The politics and history, and even the age of both parties. The challenge is that language is usually the only variable that will cause somebody to reflexively get an interpreter. But what happens with these other variables? What communications problems quietly arise if there is no interpreter or translator present? Well, let's answer that question by looking at some samples of synchronous, real-time, face-to-face communications to see what they can teach us about designing asynchronous communication and EMR documentation. The first sample is very easy. Same language, same roles. This might be you talking on the phone to a friend. You say hello, your friend hears hello, that's a communications win. The next sample is where you have two different languages but the same roles. This might be where you're traveling in another country, let's say you're in Germany and your guide suddenly says guten tag. You have no idea what that means and that is a communications fail. Of course, when this happens, people reflexively call for an interpreter. And with the interpreter, we have a communications win. Again, the guide says, Guten Tag. The interpreter hears Guten Tag, translates that into hello, and you hear hello, achieving the communications win. The next sample is same language and two different roles. This is commonly seen in healthcare where a physician might be talking to a technology specialist. The physician says, I need a technology solution that helps me round. What the tech specialist is thinking is maybe they need a Segway or a hoverboard. Again, without an interpreter, this results in a communications fail. The next sample is that same scenario with a translator. In modern medicine, that would be the clinical informaticist. This, again, shows a physician saying, I need a technology solution that helps me round. The informaticist hears she needs help rounding and translates that into she needs an integrated relational database. 
The technology specialist hears she needs an integrated relational database, and this creates the communications win. By having the informaticist there, we've achieved the physician's goals. The next scenario, same language but different roles. This unfortunately is sometimes seen in healthcare where physicians might be speaking to a family member. And without considering the culture boundaries that are being crossed, the physician might say, I just moved your mother from the floor to the ICU. Unfortunately, the family members hear, my mother was on the floor, when did she fall? Communications fail. Next scenario, same language but different age. Anyone with kids will appreciate this one. This is where your son or daughter says, mom or dad, I'm on Instagram, stop worrying, OMG TTYL Ader. The parent has no idea what that means. Without an interpreter, communications fail. The next sample, same language but different education. This is where maybe I want to hang out with an old high school friend of mine who's now an English professor, and they say, we can't hang out, you're the antithesis to my gestalt. I don't really know what that means. Communications fail. Next scenario, same language, same role, but different time constraints. This might be two physicians talking to each other. And the first physician on the phone says, the patient presented with a general sense of significant malaise after, e after eating a second physician is thinking, I just need to know if they were on Coumadin. Please get to the point. Again, communications fail. Finally, in the last sample, we have the same language, same culture, and same age. This should be optimal, but sometimes it doesn't work. This might be seen where two roommates are talking on the phone. And the first roommate says, I just had the most miserable day at work. My boss really hates me. By the way, can you bring home some milk? And the other roommate just hears, blah, 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 bring home some milk. And if they come home with milk, that might be considered a communications win. Or is it? So to sum up, error checking computers versus humans. Computers have error checking protocols and transmit information in its entirety exactly as designed. Humans do not have that ability. However, in synchronous face-to-face -face or telephone handoff, Humans have the ability to perform some additional levels of error checking, such as the puzzled look, the huh, the request for clarification, or a request for verbal readback, so that the sender can readjust the message and retransmit for communications win. EMR documentation, which is asynchronous, does not have that ability. So this brings us to the two take-home messages for this presentation. The first is that for effective interoperability and user experience, informaticists would be well served to consider the following when designing clinical EMR documentation. The role and education of both sender and recipient, the clinical context or scenario that the documentation is addressing, the culture of both sender and recipient, time constraints and urgency for both sender and recipient, and finally, the politics and history of both sender and recipient. And the second point is that when crossing any of these boundaries, organizations should consider having an experienced interpreter, such as a clinical informaticist, present to assist with clinical translation. If you want more information, contact your neighborhood clinical informaticist or visit DirkStanley.com for more discussion about clinical workflow and EMR design. Thank you.